Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you all for joining in. Uh, uh, can you guys please confirm uh, if you can see my screen and hear me properly? Okay. Jazakallah khair. Alhamdulillah, we have close to 50 participants. Uh, fantastic. So inshallah, we can get started. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Indeed, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him and seek His help and forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from our soul's evil and our wrongdoings. He whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can misguide. And he whom He misguides, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without any partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his abd and final messenger. Sending the root upon our Nabi, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahima wa ala ala Ibrahima innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad, kama barakta ala Ibrahima wa ala ala Ibrahima innaka hamidun majid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I welcome you all with Islamic greetings. This means peace and blessing be upon you all. Jazakumullah khair, Jazakumullah khair for joining in for today's session. Inshallah, to in today's session, we will uh, go through about uh, discussing about data science and learn a little bit about data science. Inshallah, we have a lot, uh, lot to come in. Uh, I request ALMPG moderators, please help the uh, brothers who, are, who cannot hear us. If they have any query, please help them out. I know Brother Riaz is here and Brother Abdul Wahab is here. So, inshallah, please, if you can help the brothers who are in need, so that will be great. Jazakallah khair. Okay. So, I want you to confirm you guys can see my slides, not the other screen. As you can see the slides, right? Uh, and those brothers who are asking to share the screen, they cannot share the screen. Uh, only the host can share the screen. Okay. Jazakallah khair. Okay. All right. So let me give you a brief introduction. <clears throat> okay. Why and for who is this webinar for? I request all the brothers and sisters, please kindly switch off your uh, uh, video, uh, uh, if, unless you, you want to show yourself to the whole audience. <laughs> okay. Jazakallah khair. Uh, so, by the way, uh, my name is Dawood Ahmed. I am a part of ALMPG team. Uh, I'll be your host for today, inshallah. And if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat box, inshallah. Uh, I and the uh, uh, other team members of ALMPG will try to accommodate and take the questions. Jazakallah khair. So, going back to the introduction, why and for who is this webinar for? Uh, why? Uh, first, the, uh, the question is why the webinar uh, on data science and analytics. So data science is a vast field, and it is one of the fastest growing technology in IT sector. And alhamdulillah, they, uh, they pay pretty well. You know, if, uh, per, if you want to be a data analyst, if you want to be a data scientist, and uh, this is a kind of a new, inter, uh, a new technology. So there is not a lot of competition in this technology. Uh, so, inshallah, uh, even if you are fresher with less background uh, experience or less IT background, inshallah, you can join in this session. This session, the main intention of this session is to educate our community that there is a certain field which where you guys can go in, end up in, and can make a good career in it. This session is not about uh, providing the training. Yes, alhamdulillah, uh, we have Brother Mo Wendwani who is helping us out with the training. But our main intention from ALMPG is that educate our audience or educate our community members that what is the scope in uh, data science and analytics and how you can, how you can, you know, grow in this field, what are the opportunity, what you need to know about this field to kickstart your career. It doesn't matter to us where you get the training from, where you learn it from. You can learn from online courses. You can learn from free courses. It doesn't matter. So what we want, I want personally, or the team of ALMPG want, is that you guys learn this technology. Uh, start learning this technology, whether you are a fresher, you, are, you have an IT background, you don't have an IT background, you're coming from a different field, you want to go into IT, this is the right field. This is a good field, uh, discover it, and inshallah, you can create a good career in it. And uh, this is, is going to be a long-term uh, career goal, inshallah. 
So, and for who? I just so told that, you know, for who is this? Anybody who wants to learn data science, who is interested in data science and want to, uh, want to kind of, you know, build a career in data science. And also those people who are already experienced people want to switch jobs, right? Switch field. They, this webinar is for all, for them also. So inshallah, we have a lot coming in. Uh, uh, so inshallah, stay tuned. Uh, let's move to my second slide. Okay, webinar format. Okay, the webinar format, inshallah, we will be uh, trying to wrap up everything in 1.5 hours, one and a half hour session. Uh, there will be a five minute break. If necessary, if Brother Mohamed Wani, you know, who will be our presenter, if he thinks we can have a five minute break in the middle. And at the end of the session, we will take uh, questions and answer them. Okay. And now presenter and agenda for today. Our presenter, inshallah, will be Brother Mohamed Wani. Alhamdulillah, he has been, he's been a uh, fantastic social entrepreneur who is trying to help the community out with providing with the fantastic and very, very, you know, effective uh, uh, training uh, batches and sessions. So inshallah, he is here to share his knowledge and experience with us so that, you know, we can grow and we can, you know, cre uh, help others. So, Jazakallah khair, Brother Mo. So, let me quickly kind of walk through what is the agenda for today. Uh, what is data science? We will discuss why data science, uh, type of analytics in data science, okay? Uh, data science portfolio. I'm, I'm interested in data science portfolio, okay? And data science process, how it works, where it starts, and where it ends. And then we will have career and scope in data science. This is important, guys. Okay, even if you have joined in just to learn, okay, this is good. Just join and see what are the career opportunities and what is the scope of data science in future. So if, if, if you are just joining in just for, you know, for, for fun purpose, that's fine. But you can also educate somebody else, you know, who wants to join data science. So machine learning fundamentals, which is very important, and data structure, this is important. Uh, data structure, how the data is. And uh, uh, you know, before the before end, we will see a quick demo of a business problem. How, if there is a business problem, how we can utilize data science and uh, you know and uh, what you call analytics to solve that business problem. And in the, at the end of the session, inshallah, brother Mo will talk about his uh, uh, training courses or uh, whatever programs he is offering, inshallah. And uh, finally, we will take Q and A. Uh, if you have, if you guys have any uh, questions, inshallah. So let me uh, pass the ball to Brother Mo. I know Brother Mo, you have already joined in. So let me unmute you and pass you the ball so you can start sharing your screen. And I am excited about this session. I know, alhamdulillah, a lot of brothers have joined in. I see around 71. Jazakallah khair. Go ahead, Brother Mo. Uh, can you speak? Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> yes, mashallah, we can hear you and we can see your screen too. Jazakallah khair for uh, doing this, Brother Mo. Uh, so I'm excited. Let's get started. We are logged in and loaded. We are ready to fire. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, Brother. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So um, thank you, LMPG, for uh, this opportunity. I'm so happy to be here today uh, to train, the, uh, to share my knowledge and my experience with, uh, with the community. For one reason, uh, simply uh, data science is the future, and if you are not getting into it at this point of time, you are going to miss the bus. So we don't want that to happen, as it happened in the past with many evolving technologies. So uh, unfortunately, I have more than than 100, 850 slides, but I have to cut to cut short everything now, just because I want to make it limit to you know, one hour and a half, uh, inshallah. So I will try my best you know, to uh, just concentrate on slides that I think they are most important and just can over those you know, uh, with, with less value. So the agenda, hopefully, uh, can you please, Brother Dawu, can you uh, confirm you see my screen? Yes, yes, I can okay, see your screen. So this is, this is the agenda that I was planning to talk about, but unfortunately, as I said, one hour and a half, uh, it's, it's uh, not enough to, to go over this. But I will do my best, you know, to present, you know, to give you the idea why you, uh, what is it, you know, why you need to learn, to learn data science. I will start with a simple question. Is data science for me? The reason why I started with this question is simply 
in the last week only, I had three brothers. They called me and they were complaining about the age. Brother, I am 52, I am 50 this and this and that. Brother, I don't have an IT background. They're complaining, you know, all around. And they are asking, is that a sense for me? The answer is by Cathy O'Neill and Rashil uh, Scott. He said, you know, I don't want to read uh, over this, but he said, if you feel like, uh, if you are a type of a person who loves to solve puzzles, and find patterns whether you are not I mean you uh, whether uh, you are or you are not consider yourself as a quant then that are scientists for you I don't care about your age I don't care about your uh, your background I don't care about you know how good you are in IT or match that as far as as far as you love the data as far as you love to solve puzzles and find patterns hidden patterns then the answer that are scientists for you and I decided to start with this question because I keep hearing, I keep being asked these questions over and over and over. So please, brothers and sisters, before you we start, take out every uh, all these uh, you know these these problems out of your mind and just try to learn data science regardless because data science is the future. Okay, so before we talk about uh, data bro science, bro brother Mo, uh, yes, yeah. uh, sorry to cut you off. Uh, I know, alhamdulillah, uh, a lot of people know you on, uh, who, who have joined in today, but there are some uh, uh, brothers and sisters in the audience who don't know you really. So I would love if you can give us a quick introduction of yourself. I know you are being humble. I know you have a lot of degrees, so you don't want to kind of show off. But I would say, you know, if, you, if, you, if it's possible, uh, if you can give a quick introduction of yourself. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm Mohamedwani. I'm uh, or, yeah, I'm from Africa originally, from Morocco. Uh, I have a master degree in data science and data analytics from uh, Maryland University. I've been I've been a data scientist for the last uh, three four years. I'm the founder of Big Bang Data Science Solutions, where we we have four business lines. We do training in data science and data analytics. We do uh, job placement. In data science, we do also uh, consulting and contracting. Uh, right now, I'm working on my PhD in data science and data analytics, and of course, machine learning is going to take me another three or four years to complete. I, I don't care, to be honest with you, because I know for sure that data science is the future, and I will do whatever it will take, you know, to be there. So this is just in brief. You know, I have so many uh, degrees. Yes, in the in the in the business in IT and so many certificates but at the end of the day brothers and sisters don't worry about the degrees don't worry about you know uh, about certificates the most important things to me as a hiring manager is uh, how many business problems you solve using the data and how many business problems you are capable of solving using the data so this is what matters at the end of the day and you know if you don't have degrees if you don't have uh, you know, certificate. That's not the end of the world. As far as as far as you know, how to solve business problems using the data. That one matters at the end. And thanks, brother Dawood, for uh, for asking the question. So uh, before we we dive deeply into the, the field of data science, let's ju just you know uh, back back up a little bit and talk about this data explosion. So just I want to share with you the picture of how much data we uh, we uh, generate across the globe in a, in a, in a daily basis. And this is just a few, few examples here. Okay, just a few examples. You know, this is just, uh, you know, 12 terabytes every day uh, that's, that's for the Twitter. And the Airbus, you know, 10 terabytes every, every 30 minutes. Imagine if you can use this data here and, uh, you know, you know how to, you know, to dig deeply into it, zoom into it. You may you may save save lives, you know. So uh, they say here we create 2.5 quantillion bytes of data, and the, in the last two years, I mean the the data that exists in the world today, 90% of it was created in in the last two years. So imagine you know the immense of data being generated you know across the globe, in, in a minute. Okay, so this is some examples too. You know, you know, uh, 
for this is every minute. This is what we, what happens every minute. You know, 600 plus videos. 200 million emails sent, you know, 400, uh, 400,000 million subscribe calling, you know, down here, 400,000 plus Twitters, you know, 700,000, uh, 17,000 photos in Flickr, you know, 1,500 plus on, on, the, on the blog post. And this is per minute, if you do the math, you know, do the math times, you know, 60 times, uh, you know, to, to find you know, what happens in, in one hour, then times 24 to find what happens in 24. So there is a lot of data being generated on a daily basis, and so there's some numbers also. But the problem here, and this data has been generated, you know, in the past, you know, in the past few, few elements do, do generate the data, and we are consuming that data. We get the data from from the media, from the TV, from the radio, etc., newspapers, and now everybody, including you, is a data generator. And just today, I promise you, you know, I would say 99% of the audience had sent an email, a text message from, through the WhatsApp or through the, the, the phone to their wives, friends, sisters, whatever. So you generated a amount of data today electronically and imagine the happens across the globe. So the problem here is not about generating the data. Yes, we will be generating the data in this immense uh, in a way, but the problem is we don't have enough people to look into this data and now and find has hidden patterns. It is forecasted that in 2020, by 2020, the, the, the amount of data that will be generated will be uh, five, 50 times more than what one would generate in 20, 20, 2011. So I would say we are talking now about 45, uh, 45 exabytes of data. That's how much data that will be generating you know, in the next uh, five, six years from now. And as I said, the problem is, and this data is the future, is, is the oil. You know, if you know, if you have the, the skills, you know, to look into this data, if you have the skills to torture this data, to get some insight from, from this data, then the future is at your hand. So, uh, so this is just the data explosion. As you see here, we generate the data everywhere, but this data almost, I would say, you know, at percentage of 80 to 90 percent of it is not used yet. Yes, it's not used yet because the demand over, uh, overcome the supply. So we have a lot, I mean, we need people, you know, we need people who can, you know, use this data, find some hidden patterns, find some insights, find some meaningful with it, but we don't have the skill, the people with the skill set who can do that. And that's why right now, you know, everybody is fighting against time, especially companies, to create within their analytical team, you know, hire data scientists. That's why also that data science is one of the top, uh, you know, paid, uh, you know, paid uh, jobs in the world. You know, if if you if, if you if if you wait, you might miss the bus. Okay, so now we understand the explosion of the data across the globe. We understand how much data has been generated and the minute and the daily basis across the globe. Now let's talk about why, you know, what is data science? You know, what, what is the relationship between this data that we explore, that we, we generate on a daily basis, and the field of data science? So, uh, honestly, I mean, you know, I compared programs, uh, you know, across a few, 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 uh, few universities and academia world that, you know, data science is still in a, in a not mature field. So if you compare, for example, uh, a master's degree in data science from Georgia Tech here in Atlanta or Kansas State University and any other universities across the globe, you are going to see a lot of differences. You are going to see, you know, 80 plus percent, 80 percent plus of difference. Why? Is right now there's a lot of debates trying to, to you know, uh, uh, standardize the field and make the field mature. But I can, if you compare, for example, an MBA program across any, any industries, of, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, across the globe, 
comparing academia, then you are going to find there is a similarity at least up to 99. So the, the data science field is, is not mature yet, you know, still debating over and over. But in general, the data science is simply uh, you have the ability to take any data in any shape, any format, ability to understand that data, process it, you know, prepare it, uh, fix the data quality issues, extract valuable, visualize this data, and communicate your finding with your management and stakeholders. As simple as it is, but yes, there's more complexity behind the, you know, this, this is a process. So you take the data, you understand the data, you process the data, you extract meaningful from the data, you visualize the data, transform the data into, into plotting, into a picture, and communicate your, your finding with the stakeholders regardless of their background. So this is why I found this is, this is beautiful. It said here, you know, uh, data, and this is, this is the Ronald Roddy said, if you, if you torture the data long enough, it will confess to anything. So data science simply is torturing the data until it tells you something. And hey, if you don't reveal some insight soon, I am going to force to slice, dice, and drill. So once you have the data, then you have to slice it, dice it, drill it, you know, torture it enough to give you some insight. And at the end of the day, you need those insights to make a better decision based on, you know, on the data. You know, there is, I mean, data science does not replace experience. For example, if you are working for a company, like I would say, like we are, you are working for XYZ, and this company, what does it say, what does, what, what does I mean, it sells ice creams in, in Florida. You know, as a manager, in, you know as an employee for this company that this company generates a lot of revenue in summer. Yes, because of, of course in summer everybody loves to buy ice cream. I really don't care about this experience, so we can, we can make a decision based on this experience. We can definitely purchase, you know, invest more in summer. And let it cool down a little bit in the in the other seasons. But in summer, this is where this is the hot, the hot season. Season, then we can uh, you know invest more, you know, to generate more revenue. So this 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 the decision we can make here is based on the experience. I don't care about that. What I care about as a hiring manager is for the data from the the past history, the past two years of the company, and tell me how you know you know give me some insight using the data. So data science is not replacing your experience. It does, it does you know, supplement your experience. But at the end of the day, as a hiring manager, all I want to do is make a better decisions based on the insight you providing me as my data scientist from the data I provided you. Okay, so data science is, is, is multidisciplinary field, you know, there is something, you know, it's not only one field and you can you go home, that's not. So you need to know uh, statistics, uh, data visualization, you know, DBA, data mining, KDD, you need to know some machine learning, artificial intelligence, neural computing, uh, pattern recognition. Do you need to be an expert in this? Of course you don't. You know, there is, alhamdulillah, there are so many libraries, packages, they can do everything for us. All we have to do is know a little bit to be dangerous enough to make, to make a sense of your data. You don't have to be a statistician, but yet you need to know the quantize, the, the maximum, the minimum, to be able to statistically analyze your data. Do you need to be a data mining expert, a machine learning expert, artificial expert? No, you don't. I mean, uh, you don't. You don't need to be a mathematician. You don't have to be, you know, a statistician. Yes, you need to, to get some knowledge. I mean, you, you need to educate yourself on these mature uh, disciplines to be able to, to be a data scientist. So data science is a multidisciplinary field where you combine a lot of things, a lot of knowledge from different mature fields. And this is, this, is, this is another diagram to show you what simply data scientists. Data scientists here, uh, you know, compares or uh, combine three things. 
programming, so you need to know some programming. You know, you don't have to be a programmer, but you know, you need to know R and Python. Uh, this is the most, uh, uh, you know, free open source, uh, you know, free, free pro programming languages, open source programming languages that you need to learn to master to be a data scientist. And of course, you need to know some mathematics, algebra, linear algebra, statistics, you know, uh, p-value, something very simple. As, as a matter of fact, yesterday I had an interview with, uh, and I will show it to you later, you know, just to give you an example of what to expect. And sh the interviewer, I mean, from New York, she asked me a simple question, what is the p-value? You know, the p-value, do you use it in, in data science? Yes, you do use it. If you don't know how to use it, if you don't know what it is, then you might end up missing the opportunity. So you need to know some terms from the statistic field, but you don't have to be an expert in statistics. And also, one important element of this diagram is industry knowledge. So you have to know the data. You have to get the data from, uh, you know, have been, been, you know, been, you know, successful programmer, you know, an experienced programmer. Knowing math and stat is not going to help you to be a data scientist if you are missing this this element here, which is industry knowledge. You need the data from the industry that you are working for, and also you need you need uh, you know to know what is the business problem. You need to understand the business problem as the management does do understand it. So uh, in general, you know, data science is simply getting the data. And this data can come, you know, in a different format. It's, you know, I mean, flat files, you know, text files, PDF files, pictures, videos, audios. It can come in any any data format whatsoever. And your job as a scientist is to analyze it. Analyzing this data, you know, there, there is a hard process. You can apply. So once you analyze the data, then you find some insights. And these insights can be turned into an action, action item one, two, three, four, five, that you know turn to the management, and the management will take a decision. And this decision is data driven. It's called data driven decisions. It's not initiative, initiative decision, or it's not a decision that was made based on the experience. And I talked about the uh, the the Syrian, uh, Syrian ice cream in Florida. Cities ice cream in Florida in summer, we know based on the experience that this is a hot season, you know, let's, let's invest more money on it. But I don't care about it. All we care about is get data from the past, maybe six months of the business or two, two years, whatever data you have for, from the history, analyze it, find some insight, then help me make a better decision uh, based on the insight you provided me. Okay, so now we, we, we talked about the data explosion. We talked about why, you know, what is data science. Let's talk about why data science. Why do I need to invest? Why do I need to, why, why, why it matters? And what's so big, so, so big thing about this? Okay, so uh, just, you know, a few, few things here I would love to share with you. You know, Harvard Business uh, Day uh, forecasted that data science is the 60th career of the 21st century. You now LinkedIn, you know, they, they said that the uh, data science were the hottest skills that you know got recruit attention. They have they have they have these uh, the numbers from 2014, 15, 16, 17, and of course it's going to go in the, in, in, into I mean five. This is you know forecasted five years plus. Maybe up to uh, 20, 23, 20, I mean, uh, 20, 23, 24, 25 is still going to be the top. And uh, Glassdoor, uh, they rank data science as the first job to pursue in 2016. And of course, it's still the same in 2017, uh, 18. And it's going to be in 19, 20, 21. You know, in, in the, uh, the future. So McKinsey, uh, this is another company here. They forecasted, and th this report was done in 20, uh, 2013. They forecast the need of 1.5 million uh, data scientists or uh, data savvy managers, data scientists, da data analysts in the U.S. market only by 20, uh, 2018. So this year, 
you know, that, that's been forecasted five years ago that the US market in 2018 is going to need is going to need 1.5 million job, you know, data scientists or 1.5 million uh, people with, with data science skill sets. Okay, so uh, if you're talking about the salary wise, you know, not a problem. Uh, so if you're talking about salary wise, you know, this is the minimum, you know, if you are making over this, that's fine, but this is the minimum assuming you just jumped in into data science and you know how to do some coding, you understand the concepts, you understand the big picture, and you start working on data scientists. So the minimum you are going to make as data scientist is 118 or 126, 126, depends on where you are, but this can go up to, uh, I would say, uh, in the IC, some, some, uh, the salaries to 40. So 40 per annum, you know, to 40K per annum, this is a lot of money. Okay, so this is another thing that you need to know. Now, this is, this is another report by Ordi Rodar. They said the future belongs to the companies and people that turns data into product, and this is the future and data science simply turns data into product. So data science, data scientists with the right skill set, you will get the data, turn this data here by analyzing it, providing the insight, getting the insight, providing the uh, action items to the management, and the management can turn that insight into an action, take an action to better, you know, make, make a better decisions for their company. So the future is at your hand, if you start developing the skill set needed to be a data scientist. And regardless, you know, if you have a good, good job, you know, regardless of, you know, what your intention would, would be from learning data science, please invest in learning data science. You are going to need it later, sooner or later. I don't care about the job because the jobs are there, but just learn data science, teach your friends, your, 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 your kids, you know, even your kids, you know, start teaching them data science because this is a weapon of, of the, the, you know, that needs to be added to your arsenal for the future. If you have the skill set, you have the future. Uh, you know, the job is going to be there, inshallah. Okay, so now we understand, you know, the, the data science. We understand why do we need to learn data science. Let's talk about some, you know, analytics type. I mean, I know, you know, depends on, you know, what kind of job you are doing. I know you've been dealing, I mean, you've been, you've been dealt in the past with any of these types. And so the first one is descriptive analytics. This is where, uh, this is where you, you try to explain, and you do this on a daily basis, you try to explain what happened. You know, uh, I get B in the, in, in the class, you know, I failed this test. You know, I got a ticket, you know, driving ticket, I got pulled off. What happened? So you're trying to describe the, uh, you know, and, and describe, I mean, do some descriptive analytics, trying to answer a simple question, <coughs> excuse me, what happened? <coughs> excuse me. The second, uh, <coughs> Brother Dawood, can you please, I need to hold for one minute to go some, get some water. Can I please go? Sure, of course, please. Come on. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Okay, I'm back. Assalamu alaikum. So, the second type of this uh, analytics is it's, uh, it's diagnostic analytics, which simply what you're trying to do is answer the question why, why it happened, why I got, I got pulled over by a cop, you know, with speed, what happened, why it happened. The third, the third type of analytics is predictive analytics. Is trying to predict what is the likelihood 
that I will be pulled over when in, um, I'm traveling from A to, A to B. And the final one is prescriptive analytics is recommended what should happen. So if you look into all these four, as you see here, I would say most companies they are doing they are doing descriptive and diagnostic. So right now they are shifting, they are moving into the predictive because they want to predict what is the likelihood something is going to happen. If you are working in the telecom telecommunication, for example, and uh, for example, let's take uh, Verizon or AT&T or T-Mobile, they have millions of subscribers, and they know for sure. I know for sure they are losing customers on a monthly basis. So losing customers simply means someone, sh you know, change the service from AT&T to Verizon and from Verizon to AT&T and vice versa. So they are losing. They are losing client here. So your job as a scientist is predict what is the likelihood someone is going to churn, is going to leave, is going to switch. So if you have that as a hiring manager or as a manager, if you have that piece of information, then you will do something to stop it from happening. And this is how important the predictive analytics is for the company. So this is data science. Data science is predicting, you know, you know, use, using the data to predict what is the likelihood something is going to happen. And once you have that piece of, of information at your hand, then you can take an action, you know, before it happens. If they know that Mommy Dwani, I'm using T-Mobile for example, and they know two months ahead of time that I will be, I will be churning based on the past history. The manager will call me and say, Mr. Medwani, I know you've been a customer with us for this certain point of time, you know, six months, six years, whatever. Is there anything I can help you? I know you are a valuable customer. Listen, I will give you 50%, you know, just be, for being a valuable customer. Then I get the 50% and I'm going to stay. So they spend, you know, they have a piece of information to tell them, a certain accuracy that Momidwani will be turning, will be leaving. So they, with using data science, they saved their business. And in the business, it is more expensive to acquire new clients than to keep, you know, the existing clients. I'm sorry, it's more expensive. Uh, yes, it's more expensive to acquire new clients. So if you have clients, keep them. Do whatever it takes to keep them. The, if, if, they, if you let them go, it is going to cost you a lot to bring new customers. That's why it is very important, you know, these companies, they apply predictive analytics. They know what's going to happen or what is the likelihood something's going to happen. And they make an actions. They, they, they yeah, you know, take an action before that happens. Okay, so, uh, yes, you know, so descriptive, uh, descriptive analytics, it tries simply answering simple questions, how many, uh, where, what, you know, what, and how, how do we, something just very basic questions. So in the diagnostic an uh, analytics, you are trying to answer the question, why it happened, predictive, what is the likelihood it's going to happen, you know, who's going to open, uh, if you are working for, uh, for, for example, you are working for, for marketing department and you sent uh, over a million emails, so you can use uh, this predictive analytics to predict who is the likelihood, how many emails they are likely to be open, who is going to respond. You already have the information ahead of hand, uh, ahead of hand before it happens. And uh, the prescriptive analytics is a combination of you know descriptive and predictive. <coughs> so once once you uh, you know you acquire the skill set you know to be in data science definitely it's it's across industries you can work for any company regardless of the size regardless of the industry and as far as they have data. So you can work for entertainment, <coughs> uh, utilities, telecommunication, transportation security, retail, finance, healthcare. You know, data science skills, they are transparency. Once you are, you complete the first project, definitely, 
you can apply what you learned across industries. So don't be, uh, you know, don't worry about where you'll be you getting the job. Don't worry about the size or the industry. Yes, the, the, once you have the skills, definitely you can apply them across industries. And these are some of the things that you will be, uh, you know, that data science can do for you as an individual or as a company. For example, I mean, uh, first of all, it empowers the management to make a better decision. Now I have the insight, I have all the information I need to make a better decision. And I'll give you an example. Assuming that you have a company or you are working for a company and they want to make a decision, you know, to, to start, you know, a branch. You know, we have a company here in Atlanta and we want to start a branch in California. The, the question is very simple. The manager is again ask a question. Do we need to start a branch in California? Yes or no? Clear. So data science will answer the question. You know, based you know based in uh, based in the past history. So with with data science it will help the management make a better decision. It will data science will increase our operational efficiency. It will increase accountability and validation decision and also it will identify New, new opportunities, you know, to stay competitive. Unfortunately, if you know, this is according to statistics. If you don't have any company, any business that does not have the analytical team established, up and running, they are going to be out of the business sooner or later because competition is going to go up. And these competitors, they already have machine learning data science applied in their processes. Okay, so uh, no voice. Uh, so. Brother uh, Mo, just a second. Can everybody hear us? I see two brothers, you know, they have said that they can't hear. So, yes, okay. I got only one yes. Okay. I uh, Okay, those brothers, I think uh, they need to rejoin. Jazakallah khair, Brother Mo. Please go ahead, continue. No problem. So we talked about, uh, you know, uh, explosion of the data. We talked about what is data science, why data science. Let's talk about the portfolio. You know, you want to build, I know everybody is thirsty now, is excited to be a data scientist. Okay, what is, how this portfolio looks uh, look like? There are four, you know, there are few competencies that you need to acquire to be a data scientist. Number one is you have to have some quantitative skills. You know, simply uh, you need to be able to transform all the business problems that you'll be working on from a business problem into an analytical problem. In, in other words, you need to quantify that business problem. And I'll give you an example. So if you are working for me right now and I asked you, you know, to help me, uh, to help me improve the conversion rate. So I have a website, I'm selling items A, B, C, D. You know, and they want, and they have so many, vis a lot of visitors across the globe, you know, they click, but they live. So I want to improve the, com I mean, uh, the question is, can you help me uh, improve the conversion rate? So let me do it. Can you help me improve conversion rate? So this is the question. So to quantify it is simply, I would say, can, you know, can we increase conversion rate to 10% per month? So now this is the business problem. The business problem is very simple. Can you help me increase the conversion rate? By your, I mean, what you just did, you transformed this business problem into quantified business problem, into an analytical business problem. Now we have two numbers. We have uh, 10% and we have a month. So this is, this is the kind of skills that you need to acquire as data scientists. Let me clear this out. So the second, uh, the second uh, competency is you need to know some machine learning, of course. You need to know some programming. You know, fortunately, if you are not good in program, that's not going to stop you from being a data scientist simply because there is a lot of applications that don't require to be in any programming. I'll give you an example. Watson Analytics, BigML, Salesforce Enterprise Miner, 
uh, Rapid Miner and Tableau. So there's a lot of, you know, can't hear, you, can't hear anything. Brother, uh, are you, uh, Dawood, can you please try to fix this? I oh, just want to make sure that everybody hears me. Brother Dawood? Sure, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. Okay, shall, shall we stop until we get this taken care of, or should you continue? No, I think it's just a couple of brothers, so let's continue. I'll uh, try to help them out personally. Sure. Thank you. So uh, the second, yeah, the quantity, the second one, the first one, technical aptitude, um, and aptitude is the, 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 the second one. So you need to know some, you know, computer science, you know, IT, you know, to need some, get familiar with machine learning and uh, programming skills. <laughs> So the third one uh, is skeptical. So you need to ask questions as as, as as many questions as possible. You need to question in most cases as data scientists, you need to always question your data. Do I have enough data? Is my data representing all the cases? Is my data enough? Is my data clean? This and that. So you always need to question your data and you always need to question the end result. So once you build a model, you know, you need to question your, your results. So you need to be skeptical. You need to be asking questions, you know, over and over. You need to interview the people involved, especially the people at the business side, before you start working on the project. And just as a matter of fact, you know, I'm working for a company uh, right now, uh, so they want to test me. Uh, and I had an interview, so I was, you know, I went to the office, and uh, they liked my resume, they liked my expertise, and this and that. So they want before they make a decision, because they know as data scientists, they are going to spend a lot of money uh, for hiring any, any data scientists anyway. So they want to, you know, start what it's a testing mode. They want to test you, and you know, to see how good you are. So I had. You know, the, I was given a data, it's over a million observations of big data, and uh, my job is to give them some insight. That's it. You know, just use the data, give us something, anything. I don't care, you know, anything. So I thought I, I made a mistake. I thought I underestimated the time that's going to take because I skipped more, you know, I skipped all these three. I had the data and started digging into it, and what happened, I did not understand the data, and did not understand the business. Or why, what I did is I get the data, let's dig into it and find it meaningful, and it did not work. So these competencies, you need to acquire them to be able to do a better job. And you need to be, a, you don't have to be a slave, you know, data science is a process. There are so many processes that you need for the best practice. There are so many processes that you need to apply to be successful. But that does not mean that you have to be a slave. Yes, you have to be uh, creative. You have to think loud, to think out of the box, to be able to find, you know, uh, to, you know, meaningful insight in your data. And finally, yes, this is very important, is you need to, be, to, to learn how to communicate and collaborate your finding with stakeholders and uh, you need to co collaborate with the, uh, the other teams and also communicate your finding with the stakeholders and management. Remember, as, as, as data scientists, you know, you will be working with, uh, you know, for so many stakeholders and the definition of a stakeholder is someone who has an interest in solving the business problem. So these stakeholders, they came with, they have different backgrounds. So you need to speak one language that can be understood by all stakeholders, regardless of their background. Okay, so if you don't have all this, that's, that's still be fine because you'll be working with the team. That aside, as a team sport, you'll be working with business users, you'll be working with uh, project sponsors, of course, project managers, business intelligence, data engineers, DBA, someone who knows the data better, and you as the modeler and as data scientist. So if at a certain point of time you know that you will never be a data scientist, that, that is not going to stop you from learning data science, simply because there is another job coming up right now. It's called 
uh, it's called uh, citizen data scientist. A citizen data scientist is not a data scientist. No, data scientist is someone who build the models, test the models, put the models alive in production, and keep monitoring the outcome. So citizen data scientist is someone who comes after the data, data analyst, I'm sorry, data scientist, someone who uses the product that being created by, by data, data, by data scientist. So yes, there is always a chance to be a data scientist. And just according to uh, Gartner, it's 40% of data science tasks will be automated by 2020. So we are going to have a lot of automation. They might not need me as data scientist, but they will need you as citizen data scientist, someone who can monitor those uh, you know, models. They already been tested, been, been implemented live. So there is always going to be a chance to be working as data scientist or at least as citizen data scientist. And since we are moving into automation, you know, in, in the and in, in the future, they are going to acquire more more citizen data scientists than data scientists. And one more thing is, you know, with the data scientists, so many jobs will be lost. You know, five percent of jobs can be completely automated. And 60% of this 5% you know, is, is jobs for CAO. So we are losing jobs, yes, because of data science. And of course, if you don't have the skills of being a data scientist, so you might end up being a victim in the future. And yes, and data science, even though we lose jobs as data scientists, we are creating more jobs. They are still going to need a citizen data scientist or a data scientist, someone who can train, you know, machine learning to learn from the data, someone who can explain, explainers, explain the finding, explain the hidden patterns, explain the, the, the insight to the management, and someone who keep monitors, sustain, the uh, the uh, credibility of the, the machine learning or the, the, the models once it's alive. So assuming that I work I work for uh, for for this company, and my job is to build a model to predict who is going to get the loan and who is going to be defaulted and not to give the loan. So it's very simple, and and this it happens to everybody of us. You know sometimes you go shopping. And uh, once you get to the set of point where you you know you want to pay for what you've been what you shopped for, sometimes they ask to do you want to save twenty percent you know or ten percent you know by applying for the internal or the the, the score i mean the the, the, the store credit uh, credit card yes, I mean definitely something I can do you know to save ten percent or twenty five percent at calls if you are familiar with this company uh, at calls this is a uh, a retail store. They sometimes, if you are new clients, they are new customer. They offer up to 25 percent the first purchase. So yes, you do that. And what happens? You know, they give you an application. In the application, you have to submit your name, your social security number, your income. Sorry. your income and hit submit. And within a minute or less, it's going to be approved or denied. So what happens is in the application, the reason I mean, uh, as a scientist, I trained an algorithm and I, I put the algorithm and I explained to the management and the algorithm is there live. So I lived and there is a data, the citizen data scientist comes after me and sustain this model. So, so they are still going to need you as data. I mean, regardless if you are data scientist or citizen citizen data scientist, to monitor the outcome of the uh, the automation. Okay. So now, if if you know, uh, let's talk about data science day to day activity. <coughs> Assuming now you are data scientist. Uh, so sorry to cut you. I think this is a good time to take a quick break. You will also get uh, some time to rest and kind of, you know, have, have a little drink, uh, maybe tea or coffee, 
and our uh, audience will also uh, get a chance to grab something. What do you say? Yes, brother, I'm fine. Yeah, see, yeah, please stop recording. Inshallah, Taala, we can we can start in uh, ten minutes, five minutes. Just five. Let's take a five minute break. You know, okay, just sure. a kind of tea or coffee break. Yeah, people can okay. um, you know kind of. You will also get some time to kind of rest. So all right. So let's join uh, after like five minutes. Inshallah, stay tuned. So brother, we'll give him uh, five minutes to alhamdulillah take some rest. He has been speaking from almost an hour now. So let him uh, you know take his time. So meanwhile, I'll take this opportunity, kind of, you know, walk you guys through those who, those people who are new to ALMPG. What is ALMPG, and what what do we do at ALMPG, right? Uh, so let me kind of share my screen. I want to guys uh, walk you through uh, the platform so that you guys are aware. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Uh, the slide one. Uh, Assalamu alaikum brother, can we get the slide after the session? Inshallah, inshallah, we'll upload it on ALMPG, you can download it from there. Jazakallah khair. So uh, just confirm if you guys can see my screen on the other end. Yeah, it's perfect, okay. So I just want to quickly kind of uh, walk you guys through the ALMPG website and what do we actually do, those people who are new to ALMPG. Alhamdulillah, ALMPG is a platform for community, it's a free platform. Alhamdulillah, where you can, you know, kind of, you know, share and apply for a referred job guide and you can guide somebody, uh, get guidance and, you know, you can connect with professionals. So, Alhamdulillah, we have close to 7,000 professionals and uh, we have, we conduct um, a lot of uh, free webinars and we post direct job. The main concept of ALMPG is, you know, I work in a team at my workplace and if I see that there is a job opening present there, and I can help somebody get that job. So rather than finding somebody from outside, why don't I just put that job on here so that somebody from the community can, you know, uh, take uh, benefit of it. So that's the main point about, uh, uh, main uh, motive of ALMPG kind of helping and giving back to the community. Uh, there is also a lot of uh, students, there are a lot of uh, freshers who come on the platform and they kind of share their uh, and share their experience and ask questions, you know, how they can start a career, how they can be successful or how they are, what job they are looking for. And inshallah, there are seniors who can help them out. So this is a give and, a give and take uh, kind of a concept on ELNPG. Inshallah, you help somebody and somebody is inshallah going to help you out. And also we help businesses here on ALMPG trying to, you know, so so that, you know, this platform is a kind of a, a multi-field platform, right? Not just for the professionals or the job seekers or job holders, but also for the businesses, you know, they want to come in and um, they want to support the community with good services. And in the same manner, the community wants to help them out. Oh, Brother Moment One is one of our business, right? He, we want him to succeed. We want him to help him uh, kind of, you know, uh, give him a boost, you know. Because you see, uh, doing a job, it will only uh, help us run our own house, our own business, uh, our own uh, house. Uh, but uh, doing a business, it can help three, four, five families. You know, if you do a business, if you become an entrepreneur, you start a company, and you can help not just yourself, your family, but you can help uh, other people, other people and their family who you hire uh, hire them and you give them employment. So that's why we kind of support the business on ALMPG so that you know we give them a platform where they can help each other out. And also, just giving you a good news, guys, and inshallah, we are soon going to LMPG start a startup council. We will help entrepreneurs. If you guys have any idea, right, uh, but you don't know where to start, how to start, where to get the funding, and whatsoever, you know, we will have, inshallah, we will start the startup council where you can come in and we will try to groom you up. We will try to help you guys up. Uh, with whatever needs you have. Maybe you want to create a business plan. Maybe you want some resource. Maybe you want to, you know, start thinking about a business partnership. Inshallah, we will try to help you out. So that is coming in, inshallah. Maybe by the end of next month, we will have the website ready. So inshallah, that will help us out. So that is it. And also, we have our applications, apps, right? A Google app and iOS app. You can feel free to download it, inshallah. You can post job there. 
and not just jobs, right? Uh, you can hear post job and you can send queries, right? If you have any question, you don't know where to uh, get the answer. Just put it up, put up a, call, a, a post here. You see, these are uh, this is how the post look like job support. Somebody's requesting requesting for a job support, a training and placement help. Somebody's looking for help. You guys can help it over. You know, it's free. You don't need, we don't charge anything. You know, it's a free platform. Alhamdulillah, just come in. If you need help, you can ask for help. And if you if you, if you don't need help, you are Alhamdulillah well off. You can help somebody off, right? And also, we will have we have this section here in under resources. You will get a couple of op uh, options here. First option is, you know, in under resources, you will see all the upcoming webinars. Uh, we have a webinar coming on Salesforce. So if you guys want to learn more about Salesforce, what is Salesforce, what is the job scope in Salesforce, how to succeed in Salesforce, one of the brother, alhamdulillah, he volunteered us. So we will have this session on 20th of this month, October 20th. And the brother name is Brother Saad, inshallah, he will help us. Uh, understand what is Salesforce. That's not going to be like something kind of training, but it's, it's going to give you an overview of what is uh, kind of you know uh, uh, Salesforce. And also the past event, the past webinar. If you want to ask, uh, access them, you can get it here, right? We did this big data. We did this uh, uh, resume and LinkedIn workshop, and we do do a lot of lot of uh, webinars. You know, you can just go in here learn more and register, right? Click on that and you will get the details from here, uh, the slides or you can also get the uh, YouTube video, right? Just click on the documents like you see this one. Uh, this is a YouTube video, you know, I was uh, going through it. We had, this was a fantastic session actually. This uh, resume, LinkedIn, job search and interview prep session. So Alhamdulillah, this is a very good session. So you can get the resources and also just quickly end up, uh, we have mentors, right? If you are a fresher or if you are a beginner or if you are switching field, we have a mentorship program. If you join it, join, become a member of ALMPG. It's a free program and you can request mentorship from the seniors. So we have a lot of brothers who volunteered. So Alhamdulillah, you can ask for their mentorship. You can email them and you can say, hey brother, I wanna end up in this field. Can you just guide me how I can start, where I can start and how to succeed, right? Some those questions. So inshallah, uh, that, was, that was a little bit I want to show. And also you can join ALMPG's Facebook page where we will share, you know, our webinars going on and what is going on and on. So inshallah, so become a member. You know, it's a free, free, uh, free platform, share jobs, or you can, you know, get a, a look for a job. There is a lot we can do here, inshallah, together. So this is more kind of a community model, helping the community out. All right, let's go back to Brother Mo. I think he got a re uh, little rest. <laughs> so inshallah, I know he have a lot to cover. So I just don't want to waste time. Uh, so let me pass the ball back, okay? Brother Mo, I'm uh, making you the presenter. Please go ahead, share your screen. And we can get started. Uh, are you there, Brother Mo? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, can you see my oh. screen? Okay. And not yet, not yet. Okay. Yeah, but how about now? All right, perfect. We can see it. Go ahead. Okay, I said, you know, let's, let's move on into the data science process. This is your day-to-day -day activities, you know, what you be hard as data scientist. You know, there are so many, uh, this is for the best practice. There are so many processes you can apply to any business problem. You know, you can apply CRISPDM, uh, scientific methodology, data, you know, Inform, information economic approach or mad uh, math skill approach. But the most common approach that's been used in data science is called CRISPDM, which stands for Cross Industry Standard Processing for Data Mining. So this is a process, and it's, I mean, this, this is CRISPDM. The first thing you do, once you get hired, then you get a job, you get a business problem. And the business problem, it can be anything related. Uh, you know, it can be anything that, you know, the, the, the hiring manager wants to fix. And the first thing you have to do is you need to discover the business first. You need to know, you know, what is this business problem. You need to quantify it. You need, there is a lot that you can do at this point of, of time. There are a lot of things that you need and we can cover them in details. And once you have a big picture of what needs to be fixed, then you need to acquire the data. 
and the data if you are lucky the data is there for you if you are not then you need to struggle not to get the data for the data from different servers the different databases etc and after uh, and once you have the data the data is, is in a row shape so it simply means it has so many data quality issues it has some outliers if you if you know what are the outliers Okay, outliers, you have, uh, inform I mean, you need to fix missing values, you need to fix, uh, you know, duplicate record, etc. So once you prepare your data, then you build a model. And in the modeling, there are a few approaches you can take. You can build clustering models, regression models, or uh, classification models. And at this point in here, if your data does not make you, I mean, if you are unable to build a model, then you need to go back. You need to go back and ask for more data. And maybe if the data is not there, you need to go back and ask the business users, you know, the business um, users and the business savvy, the business expert to help you understand the business one more time. So this is a loop, I mean, a loop back means simply once you get to one point and if you are getting into the point that you cannot advance then you need to add, to go back and fix, you know, clear your doubts, clear your, uh, uh, get your answer, I mean, your questions answered, etc. And once you build a model, then you need you know, to evaluate how good the model is, you know, and communicate with the management. If the management are happy, you, uh, if they are not happy, then you need to go back, build uh, test more models, and maybe go back, build more models, go back, get the data, go back, get answers, I mean, your questions answers. Assuming that everything at this point is green, the manager, the management, they are happy, then you need to work with development, maybe create an IPA, you know, API, uh, so and to, to, to put or to implement your, your, your model into production. So this is your day-to-day -day activities and in crisp DM terminologies, this is why it happens in you know, the first step of the process is understand the business that you've been hired for. You need to de determine the overall business objectives. So if, if, I, if I hired you as a scientist and I ask you a simple question, can you help me improve the conversion rate then your job as a scientist is to understand what is the overall, uh, you know, return of investment. What is the overall business object that I want to achieve by simply fixing this conversion rate? Then you need you need to assess the situation. You need to determine the data mining approach. You need to build to build, you know, the project plan. And of course, there are. I mean, you don't have to be slave. Then you have to be creative. Add more and documents. So this is the first thing you can do and at this point in here you are not doing data science yet. Now you need to work with someone who knows the business better. So you might be working with a business analyst or a business uh, users at this point. So these people here, they know business better, so you need to work with someone who knows the business better to help you understand the business and help you understand the business problem you've been hired to fix. So once you have a clear understanding of the business, then you need to acquire the data. And at this point in here, you'll be working with DBA, someone who knows the, 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 the data better, someone who knows where the data is located, how to get the data. So you need to collect the data. You need to describe how good, it, I mean, statistically your data. You need to explore your data using ADA, exploratory data analysis, and you need to fix the data quality issues. <clears throat> so once you have a clear understanding of the data, then you need to move to the next phase, and in here you will be start doing data science. So in here, you need to prepare the data. You need to transform the data. You need to, uh, pro I mean, to, uh, you know, to quantify, I mean, to, to uh, factorize your data, to normalize your data, transform your data. There is a lot you can do here. And also, yes, you can be creative, add more and more steps and slide, you know, and, uh, you know, steps to the process. So once you, you prepare your data, and now you need to determine the approach which approach you need to take. 
to solve the business problem? Are you doing descriptive analytics or predictive analytics? If you are doing predictive analytics, are you doing classification or regression or clustering or reinforcement? So there is a lot you can do here. And once you build the model, you, you need you know to uh, build the model, assist the model, you know uh, compare the models, you know get the best model, you know that. That, that give you the best accuracy, uh, improve the hyper parameter of the models, and finally evaluate how good the model is. So once this, this is the whole process, and once and everything, if everything goes green, then you need to, you know, to work with the de development to put the model live. So this is your day-to-day, -day as I, I mean, day-to-day -day, uh, you know, activity as a scientist, and it depends on the process you are applying. If you are applying this CRISP-DM, which stands for Cross Industry Standard Processing for Data Mining, then this is how your life would look like as a data scientist. And you might end up working on two projects. The first project you are in this phase, the second project you are in modeling. So you can work. You know you can work in the two projects simultaneously if you are multitasking. So it depends. So, but this is typically what I mean. How your life would look like as a scientist. Also, as a scientist, you know the I mean is try to to you know uh, process your steps. You know you you uh, you know try to you know to to create your own process. So this is few things that you need to do. Number one, once you get hard, you will be asked, you know, you need to ask as many questions as possible about, sorry, you need to ask as many questions as possible. Uh, trying to get the pen one more time. Okay, here. Okay, ask questions about the pro I mean, the, the, the business problem and, uh, you know, try to quantify it. And remember, data science is not a solution to all business problems, you need to make sure that your data, your problem can be solved using data. And how can you make sure that the business problem you're trying to solve can be solved using data is simply trying to quantify it. If your business problem is not quantifiable, it cannot be transformed into an analytical business problem, then there is no need to proceed. It's going to be just a waste of time. And in the second one is do some research. You know, searching. You need to get the data. You need to uh, to you know acquire the data, fix the data, prepare the data. And to be honest with you, and this is a mistake that I did in my last project, is I just started. You know, I got the data and jumped in 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 the in in, the, in this phase here. I mean, I did not understand the business problem. I did not understand the data, and it end up my data has been corrupted. It end up wasting a lot of time trying to figure out something which could be could be cleared out by simply understanding what is the problem I was trying to fix. So, so that's that's what happens. And by the way, you know, 60% to 70% of data scientists is done in in this phase here. And yes, that's the philosophy. And Albert Einstein. It once said, if if I was given one hour to save the planet, I would spend 59 minutes solving solving the problem. I mean, if I was given one hour to save the planet, I would spend 59 minutes understanding the problem and one minute solving the problem. So as a scientist, you need to spend at least 59 minutes out of one hour in phase one and two. Phase one and to simply trying to understand the business better and trying to understand the data better. And to be successful in phase one and two, you need to work with two experts. You need to work with business expert, someone who knows the business better. They can help you clear out your doubt about the business. And you need to work with data expert, someone who knows the data better. They can help you understand, you know, give you question answer regarding the data. So once you have a clear picture of the, the business, you have the data ready, then you build the model. And the model simply, you can, it depends on so many criteria that's going to help you de decide which approach to take. There are four approaches. Uh, there are more than four, actually five or uh, six approaches. But I'll talk about four. Classification is in one approach. Regression is another. Clustering is another. Reinforcement is another. Uh, natural language processing is another. There's so many approaches, but the limit 
you know, 60% to 70% of data scientists are doing uh, classification, regression, or clustering. So once you build the model, then you need to validate how good the model is. You know, you have the data. So this is your data. You have, I would say, million. We have ID. We have name, income, etc. So as data scientists, what you have to do is you are going to build, you are going to build the model on 60% or 80%, and the rest is where you know. So you you have two data sets here. Uh, you have you know. Uh, I would say you you have you have you have one million of, of observation. So you build the model on 80%. And the the twenty percent is is, the, is 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 part of your data where you need to do some validation. So you have eighty percent of your data to build the model, twenty percent of your data to validate how good the model is before you test the model. And if the, the model looks good, then you interpret, you share your finding with the, with the management and stakeholders before you work with the. Uh, developer to apply this uh, you know the, the data science or the, the mod in production okay so this is a good example I'm going to give you an analogy so assuming you are a fox I'm the lioness and I hired you as data scientist to find me a prey so this is exactly what is going to happen in the real world world problem so first of all you, you be hard as data scientist so as as a fox or as a data scientist then you need you know, to, to access the data. After you, of course, you understand the business problem here. The business problem is help me find uh, the, the prey. So this is the business problem, and this is why you've been hired for. So the first step is you need the data. And the, in our case here, it's simply you need to know how big the, the jungle is, how many animals in the jungle, you know, when are, you know, how many animals, how big, the, the trees, etc. So you have to know as many uh, as possible, as, as much information as possible about the jungle. So this is, uh, you know, uh, step number two. Step number three, then you need to, I mean, to, you need you need a past history. You need to do some descriptive analytics about the past history. So you need to ask the lioness, you know, can you give me uh, six months of data. I want to know how many preys have been, been caught. You know when, where, how big. You know the size, the, the type, etc. So you need to find as many information from the past as possible. So and you need to do some descriptive analytics, and this will tell you the maximum, the minimum, the quantiles, the etc. So once you have a clear understanding of the past, so you learn something from the past, then now you can predict for the future. So machine learning or data science simply learning from the past to predict what is the likelihood something is going to happen. So now we can predict, you know, what is the likelihood we are going to catch a prey and, uh, you know, a certain point of time, a certain point of day, a certain part of the jungle. And so once once we build the model, then we, we, we can optimize it, you know, if we know that the prey is going to be here, and of course, there is so many ways to be there that we can even optimize it, you know, optimizing it by simply improving the accuracy of the model, in improving, tweaking a little bit the, the, the parameters and the hyperparameters of this model, you know, to, to get the, the optimal optimal result. And the last the last things to do is to automate automate the process. So I don't want to do this over and over. I am going to just build some trenches. And you know for the automation, and this is this is this is what you can do at the end as you know <coughs> as citizen data scientist. So I will be doing all this as, as data scientist, but at the end, if you cannot make it as data scientist, you're always going to have a chance to be a citizen data scientist. And citizen data scientist is someone who monitors what, in in general term, someone who monitors what data scientists already did. Okay, so in, in general, you know, this is, this is your life as data scientist. You know, you'll be spending a lot of time, you know, in the data. So this is all data. You know, this, this is one, 59 minutes out of one hour, 59, 59 minutes out of one hour 
trying to understand the business problem, understanding the data, and at the end, you can, once you have that cleared out, then you, need, you can answer any question related to the data. And the reason why it takes so long, you know, to, you know, a lot of time, a lot of, you know, effort and time, you know, and thoughts in this phase is because the data never been in a good shape. So the data is, the data comes in a row, in a row shape. It has so many data quality issues, and you cannot build a model on unclean, not prepared data. Otherwise, you are going to be building a misleading, a misleading uh, models. So I thought that you know, the otherwise you know, I thought that you know, I was be spending data and analyzing, integrating, and little little time on data preparation, but that's, that's, that's not the case. And this is what happened with me in my last project. You know, when I was given this project, I thought, okay, I'm experienced. Okay, let's tackle the, the business, I mean, the, pro, the, the, uh, the data. I don't care about, a uh, little bit the model. I don't care about the data. I don't care about understanding the data. I don't care about understanding the business problem. And trust me, the job was supposed to complete in one week. It took me almost three weeks. Why? because I underestimated the process as, as, as a whole. So be prepared, uh, brothers and sisters, once you get hard as data scientists, inshallah, be prepared to spend as much time as possible simply understanding the business problem and understanding the data. If, 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 if you miss up, miss up these this two parts of the process, trust me, the, the, the cost of fixing it later is going to be, is going to be very, uh, very expensive. So it's garbage in, garbage out. You know, if you misunderstood the business problem, if you un misunderstood the data, then you are going to get the garbage. That's it, you know. That's why it is very important as data scientists to spend 59 minutes out of one hour to just on the business problem and the data according to Albert Einstein. Okay, so that's that's data science portfolio. That's data science end to end. You know, uh, you know, day to day activities. Now you might ask me a question. Okay, I want to be a data scientist. What is the next? How this career? How can I build a career in data science? It's very simple, brothers and sisters. You know, there are three things that you need to master as data scientist. Three skills that you need. Three, uh, you know, data science is three legged stool. So you need to master. <coughs> to master three things, you know, three legs stool and imagine what's going to happen if any of this is missing, definitely the stool is not going to stand. Other, and, uh, the, the same applies to your career, if any of these skills is missing, then you might not stand as a scientist. So that's why it's very important you understand this, this, this set of skills that you need to apply, you know, to, you need to, to acquire to, to stand as a scientist. So you need to learn five skills, five domains, and five life cycles. So you need to master five skills to be a data scientist. You need to master five domains to be a data scientist. And you need to master five life cycles to be a data scientist. And this is an ongoing learning. I mean, a master's degree is not going to make you a data scientist. A PhD is not going to make you a data scientist. What's going to make you a data scientist is the continuous learning. It's a journey. So let's talk about five skills and the five domains and five life cycles in brief. Okay, so these are the five skills. So you need to know some data visualization. Tableau is the best. Then you need to know some R and Python, R programming languages. You know, if you are not in, a, otherwise you'll be doing some applications. You need, if you are lucky, the data is there for you. Otherwise, you need to know some basic, basic SQL commands to be able to put the data that you need uh, in order to fix the business problem. And you need to know some statistics and help, I mean, these statistics will help you make sense of your data, make sure your data has been distributed normally, your data is not skewed to the right or the left, the data is, is balanced. I mean, you understand the quantize, the minimum, the maximum. So you, this statistics, you don't have to be an expert, but at least you need to know some, I mean, a little to be dangerous enough to have, make sense of your data. And finally, you need to acquire some presentation skills. Remember, the, uh, you will be working with uh, stakeholders, and stakeholders, as I said, definition is someone who has an interest 
on on solving the business problem and they might have different backgrounds so you need to speak one language that can be understood by stakeholders regardless of their background so you need to speak language that business can understand IT can understand finance can understand etc so these are the five skills of the first league this is the first league leg of the, the three leg stool of data science the second the second uh, I'm sorry the second leg is, is five domains uh, you need to know some BI tools that are mining you simply uh, zoom into your data to find some hidden patterns of course you need to know machine learning and modeling and modeling is simply data plus algorithm so modeling is, is, is a mathematical representative of your data you apply an algorithm to the data and you present your data by you know you, know, you present you present your data you need to know some advanced analytics uh, to be able to you know to identify any opportunities for improvement you need to know uh, some computer forensics especially if you are working with the banks you know uh, trying to to predict fraud you know, pre uh, fraud pre prevention, fraud detection, etc., intrusion detection, etc., and also you need to know big data because you'll be working with uh, with data with three uh, with three volume with three Vs, a volume of the data, a variety of the data, and velocity of the data. So these are the five domains that you need to master as a scientist. And the last leg is life cycle, and we already covered this. So the life cycle is simply, uh, simply easy, straightforward. You'll be hard as a scientist, then you need to spend time understanding the problem. You need to spend time quantifying the business problem. Otherwise, there is no need to, to apply data science. And once you get a uh, clear picture of the big problem, then you need to acquire the data. And the data is 70% plus 10%. So 80% of your time is going to be only in, in the spent in the first phase of the process which is understanding the, the business problem and uh, you know preparing and uh, getting the data so this is 59 minutes out of one hour according to Albert Einstein uh, after that you need to analyze the data and in here you can uh, use R, Python, Tableau, Rapid Miner, Task for Enterprise Miner uh, you know whatever tool and anything to name them then you need to visualize it. Visualization always give you a clear, uh, clear understanding of your data. Sometimes it it will help you find hidden patterns within the data. After that, you need again to present it to management. So these are the three legs tool that you need to apply as a scientist. So you need five skills, you need five domain, and you need five life cycles to stand as data scientist. Knowing Python is not going to make you a programmer. Knowing R is not going to make you, I'm sorry, it's not going to make you a data scientist. Knowing statistics is not going to make you a data scientist. Knowing math is not going to make you a data scientist. What's going to make you a data scientist is putting everything together. Putting these puzzles together. So you need to master five skills that you need to master. Then you need to master five domains. And you need to master five life cycles. Then you are a data scientist. Okay, so now let's talk about the most exciting part of the game, which is machine learning. What is machine learning? You know, I know you've been you heard about the term and the machine learning. You know, what is this machine learning and what is all about? What is the difference between data science and machine learning? You know, so machine learning is simply, uh, so this is some definitions. This is in 1959 uh, by Arthur Samuel. It says the ability of computers to learn without being explicitly programmed. Let the computer learn from the data, not program the data to learn, and I will give you, I'll share an analogy with you. So machine learning is just simple, it's, it's, it's like a child, you know, a baby, a child, a young child, walking in the, in the kitchen, and all of a sudden, I'm sorry, the child has saw a candle, and we, we know that kids, they already, I mean, they, they want to experience so many things. So regardless of how dangerous things are, I mean, they don't know. But still, out of curiosity, they want to discover what is, what is, what is all this about. So the child put his finger on the flame, and he got burned. So he learned that anything which is red and bright does hurt. 
Now, this is why he learned, this child learned these patterns from this incident. The next day or the next morning, the same child was walking on the, in, the, in the kitchen and he saw a bright red stove. You know, you know, he saw it and out of curiosity again, he wants to, to try what is all this about. But before he put his finger again, he remembered the patterns that he learned from yesterday incident and that's machine learning. Machine learning is simply learning some patterns from the data and applying what we learn from the data and the future. And this is totally, totally different from, uh, from programming your child. If you tell your child, honey, son, mama, son, or whatever you call him, don't, don't touch the flame, don't touch the stove, you are going to hurt yourself. So you are programming your child not to do this or to do that. While this I mean, leaving your child to, le I mean, to learn by himself or by herself, that, that's machine learning. Machine learning is simply let the, the machine learn from the data and apply what they learned in the unseen data, and that's totally different from programming a machine to do something. So in the past, you know, we have a program, we have the data, and we have, uh, we have the output. So in the machine learning, we have the data, and we have the output. And for example, we are in the data. We have customer ID. We have income. We have uh, you know marital status. We have education level, and the output, the client, uh, you know uh, active or not active. So this is the output. So what we want to do is we want to uh, use the relationship between data and output to come up with the program. So this is, data, this is machine learning, this is data science. Data science and machine learning, you know, they are used inter interchangeably. Data, I mean, machine learning is a part of data science. So we are using the data and the output of the data to come up with the function. So the function is going to be, you know, if we, have, if we learn from this and you gave me a new da data and I want to apply machine learning, simply what's going to happen, you know, fr from the data, we are going to get a function is going to be output equal function of input. So this is machine learning is going to learn this, and I can once I learn this this function function I can apply it on any unseen data. So this is this is this is uh, uh, you know related to this to this uh, to this uh, analogy here. The child learned the function that. You know, uh, anything which is red, uh, you know, red and, and bright hurt and apply the function on this red and bright. So this is the same applies to machine learning. Once you learn the function about the input and uh, the, the input and output, you can apply it on any machine learning. So what time, how, how much time do you have left, brother? Okay, yes, yes, brother, I'm going to do... Uh, <coughs> Unfortunately, I'm going to skip, because I talked about this, I'm going to skip most of these. So, uh, okay, so let's talk about machine learning. You know, in machine learning, there are a lot of families, you know, so many families that you can apply to a business problem. So assuming that you want to predict the future, and that future, you know, it can, it can you know, you have the data, you want to predict what is the likelihood something is going to happen, depends on the data that you have, depends on what you're trying to predict. You can use, if your data is supervised, means supervised means we know what to predict. So, and that what to predict can be two types, can be categorical or binary or nominal, that's classification. If it's continuous, like trying to predict how much, how many, what is the value of the house, what is the, the salary of this person, then that's regression. So in classification, you can use decision tree, logistic regression, support vector machine, k means, means neighbor, etc. And the regression, there is linear, multilinear, polynomial. And if you are doing the future, I mean, predicting the future, but you don't know what to predict, that may be unsupervised learning because we don't know what to predict. And the unsupervised learning, there are so many things you can do. We can do clustering analysis, trying to segment, you know, group your client, for example. Dimensionality reduction, association rules, like this works, you know, if you know association rules, you might get a job with uh, grocery stores. Once, if you buy the laptop, what is the likelihood you are going to buy the antivirus, etc. And uh, uh, reinforcement, 
is simply we don't have the data, we have the simulated data, and we want to predict what would be the next step. And this works in the uh, G in a GPS or in a uterine ride, then what's next? It works only for the robotic and for a gaming. So this is your life as a data scientist. This is why you'll be applying you know, in the real world. Plus, there is a lot. This is just a you know, limited list. But once you, you know, you complete the first program, inshallah, project, inshallah, then you, you keep adding, adding to your arsenal as far as the, the algorithms and modeling are concerned. Okay, so the, uh, in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the machine learning, this is, uh, this, is the, 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 this is the learning, you know, this is the box, you know, the box that you'll be, you'll be applying. First of all, you get the data, as I said, so you get the data, and the data comes in, in many shapes. So you fix the data. You you you. Okay, you fix the data. You apply. You know, you you, you prepare the data. Then you build the model, and the model can be you know classification, regression, classroom reinforcement. And once you build the model, you have to compare the model with the actual data, and that's what I call objective function or the error. The error is the difference between the model and the actual data. And once you know the, the error, then you need to do uh, optimize the error, you know, to improve it and pull the data again and build the model. And this is again your day-to-day -day activities. And I can, you know, go in more details to explain this, this diagram and it, 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 a bit better. But because of the timing, I'm going to scan over it and then I'm going to move. So as a scientist. As data scientists, you'll be working, as I said, with five types of learning. You can be uh, working with supervised learning. Supervised learning, where you have a data and you know what you are trying to predict. I want to predict if this, 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 this. Uh, I want to predict if this loan is going to be fraudulent, not fraudulent. I want to predict if transaction is going to be fraudulent, not fraudulent. I want to predict if this client is going to leave or going to stay. I want to predict if the product is going to be successful or not successful. So we know what to predict. That's called supervised learning. And if you don't want, if you don't know what to predict, then it's called unsupervised learning. So in, in the first one, the, pro, the, the the program, the machine already learned something from the data. And in the second one, the machine will make an attempt to learn something from the data. And the third part, the third type is semi-supervised learning is where you have a data. And the data, there is something, there is a little, little information about what to predict. And there is a lot of missing information as well. So semi supervised learning is when you know what to predict and at the same time you don't know what to predict. So reinforcement is used in the gaming, is used in the robotic, is when we try to predict what would be the next action. If you take action A, action one, what would be, and you take your right, what would be your next action. So these are the learning type and you will be working on one of this learning type across your projects once you be a data scientist, inshallah. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, data science can do a lot for you, but also data science has a shortcut. You know, don't expect data science to fix all your business problems. Yes, data science can know, I mean, up to now, as we understand it, can understand the context. If I say I love you and I love you, I love you, so three word, three sentences, but the, the, the tune of it might be different, the way I say it, it might be different, so data science might not be able to understand the context as of now yet. You know, data science cannot think through the problem, you know, and data science cannot help you uh, select, you know, the right tools or interpret the results. So yet, so data science can help you make calculations, can help you make automation, you know, can, can help you, you know, visualize the data, predefine the rules. But yet, data science, they still need you to, uh, you know, they still need you as data scientists to make data science successful. Okay, so this is data science, and there's another, I mean, this is data science and machine learning, and the, the, the final thing, there's another part, the another part of data science which is called deep learning. So what is the difference between machine learning and deep learning? I will explain it in shortly. So there is, there is few, few problems that cannot be solved 
you know, using machine learning. Few problems, you know, especially, uh, you know, uh, complicated problems. So this is another part of data science which is called deep learning and simply trying to mimic the biological neurons of the, the human brain. So this is the, this is the neuron and the neuron where we have we have a nucleus, this is magic, we have, we have the sensors, this is our eyes, five sense, this is where we sense, we, 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 uh, the body collects information from the outside world and, uh, you know, pass all the information in the nucleus, this is the magic, the map, you know, the magic, Allah SWT created this, uh, you know, this nucleus is something and passes the output either to take an action, like for example, you were driving fast and you saw a cop, you know, the, 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 your eye get the information, you know, send it to the nucleus, you know, transform it in actions, you need know, to slow down. So your, uh, your axon or take, take these signals away either to another cell or to a final decision. And this, 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 this is the, the biological, uh, biological neuron. We have uh, 10 rays. This is, this is how we, we, we communicate to the world, you know, to get all the information. And we get the information, then we pass the information to neurons, and neurons, you know, did some, some magic stuff in here, some, you know, in the data science uh, world, we do some calculations, some formula here, some tr transformation here, and whatever the output here is going to be carried out either to an action or to a different, a different neuron. So in the human brain, in the human body, we have almost, you know, a, a billion, a billion of neurons and in the human body. And these, this, uh, you know, these uh, neurons, they are connected to one another. So this is more advanced, more advanced topic in data science. And once you understand the, the, uh, the uh, machine learning, definitely you can apply, you can start learning, uh, you know, deep learning. So this is a, this is a real, real uh, neuron, as you see here, it has some, uh, some, uh, you know, uh, the right in here trying to, to, to get the information, and in the inside, in the heart, it's where the process, and it's connected to other cell, and they share the information, and it, it's connected to up to 1,000 connections. So in deep learning, is simply we want to build something similar to the biological, uh, uh, biological neural net. You know, they can, they can do the same things. So uh, we want to build something that can deal with incomplete data. And in, in, in a human brain, yes, if you are driving and the picture is still not clear, it's too far, then your, your brain can still, can still deal with incomplete data. Uh, we want to uh, build, uh, you, know, uh, you know, an algorithm that can de deal with, that simply mimic the human brain in dealing with incomplete data and processing. Right now we are doing serial processing. We cannot do parallel processing. And uh, now learn to adapt and degrade gracefully. So this is deep learning. And in, in general, deep learning is simply trying to mimic you know, the human brain or the human's biological cell in processing the data. Okay, so now we learned about, we learned about, you know, the data explosion, we learned about data science, the portfolio, we learned about the needs of being data scientists. What's next? Okay, so this is our last slide. You know, first of all, you know, I know you want to be a data science. I know, you know, if you talk about money-wise, everybody wants to make, you know, 150 plus uh, a year in the annual basis. Yes. Okay, first thing, you know, to remember that, uh, okay, first thing to remember is that the data science is going to be, uh, is going to be, uh, you know, according to Harvard Business, data science is the hottest job and it's going to be for the next five plus years five uh, plus years, you know, in the future. Data science is a rewarding, is a rewarding career, means the most you spend, the most you invest, uh, the most you invest in data science, you know, you will get the money back. You know, once you get hard, you know, in the first year, you get all the money back you invested in learning data science. And also, uh, you know, as data, I mean, something you need to be aware of, you know, every company, they have, you know, this tank approach of data science. 
So that's why you don't need to uh, be a slave of process. You need to think out of the box. You need to keep learning. You need to start the journey. Data science is a journey. And they have an example. I will share the story with you. I had an interview uh, from, with, you know, with a manager from California. Uh, this manager, I know he does not know anything about data science. I know he needs a data scientist, but he does not know what is data science and this and that. So what he did at the time of the interview, he just Googled. He said, let me Google some questions, and he started asking me questions from, from Google. So expect to have some scenario like this in you know, management, since data science is not mature enough yet, expect to have, to have you know, different scenarios at the interview time. Also, the uh, data science in, is in high demand. Simply tells me that this is just the right time to learn data science. Right now, we have master degrees, we have PhD degrees, and universities, they are fighting against time to build bachelor's degrees in data science. And wh when that happens, you and I, we are going to miss the bus because no one's going to hire me. They are going to hire fresh students, less money, you know, and they'll train them. So this is just the right time to learn that our sense brothers and sisters. And the last thing to know is you don't have to have a PhD degree or a master degree. The most important part to me is how many business problems you fix and how many business problems you are be, you are being uh, you'll be able to fix. And so this is the end of my uh, of my uh, of my uh, you know presentation. But before I pass this to you guys, you know, open the floor for, for questions and answers. Let me share with you some solution that we came up with as, you know, as Big Bang Data Science Solution. I'm going to open up. So this is, uh, this is our website. It's uh, bbds.ma or bigbangdatasensolution.com, wherever, you know, but this is, this is the one that we are using now, bbds.ma. Uh, so first of all, if you click on the courses, we have some, so many solutions, alhamdulillah, and we've been doing this almost, almost two years now. Uh, so we have a 13-week program, and this 13-week program, it's an equivalent of a master's degree in data science. So once I, I mean, I took my master's degree in data science, I tweaked it a little bit, you know, I intensely made the, uh, you know, made the 13-week program, plus I added four years of experience. So this is... Uh, you know, data science from zero to hero, and it is designed for someone who knows close to nothing about data science and their analytics. And also, we have a program which is uh, data science with Python. It's eight-week program. You are basically going to learn everything you learned in 13 weeks, except that you are not going to learn R or, or uh, Rapid Miner or Tableau or other stuff. So this is purely with Python. And we have another program, which is Big Data Engineering with Hadoop and uh, Spark. It's an eight-week program. All these three programs, they are going to start, you know, the batch is going to start, inshallah, on the in October 20th, so a few, few days from now. So, brothers and sisters, if you are interested in learning data science, uh, please go to bbds.ma and register. And now we have a promo, and I will let Brother Ahmad uh, that would Ahmed talks about the promo code if you want to use it. We have a promotion now, and uh, at the end of the day, if you complete the program, if you complete the program and you are not satisfied, I promise you are going to get the money back. And I don't think there is anyone in the market who guarantees money back. You know, if you are not satisfied, we will give you the money back if you are not satisfied. And after, if you look into this 13-week program, for example, it's actually 12-week program, and the last week, so you will get 150 percent, 150 plus of uh, session hours. You know, coding 150, uh, 10 projects. As I said, at the end of the day, I really don't care where you get your pro your education. I don't care about your master degree or PhD degree. All that matters for me as a hiring manager is how many business problems you solve and how many business problems you are capable of solving. And this pro program here is is, is project-wise. That simply means the first day you were, I mean, the first day you joined the program, you will start working on a project. And we have 10 projects in the program, and you are supposed to work only on one project, and you will be, uh, you know, sharing information with other team, 
that means simply means you will be learning from other projects as well. Okay, so uh, the, 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 uh, this is your portfolio. This is all the information you need. But this is at the end. At the end, we have one week for the NRV preparation. We have a resume preparation and job placement and placement guidance. So inshallah, you, we are going to help you, you know, from, uh, from, uh, from the first day to the, until you can land the job, inshallah. And if you complete the program, you can repeat at no cost. As I said, if you complete the program, you'll get the money back. So this is one way, uh, one thing. So if at the, at the program itself is not a game. So I will just take you over how did the program look like from inside. So this is my program. First of all, once you complete, you'll get certified. And this is how you look like. This is the program from the inside. It's not a game. So you, we have three labs per week. We have one lab in Python, one lab in R, one lab in Tableau. You have to deal with at least 30 questions per week. This is a quiz. And you will not be able to see, you will not be able to see the following week unless you score, unless you complete this week and score at least 100%. And once you know in the in the in the in the class in the in the program, you are going to access uh, the slides. You are going to access the slides. You are going to access the Dropbox. You are going to access the, the recorded sessions just in case you missed it. And also, you have access to all quizzes. So, brothers and sisters, I think this is the end of my presentation. I am going to be uh, you know I'm going to open the floor for you guys. So, if you have any question concern. Please address. And by the way, the program is going to start in October 20th. So please register. Just click on the registration. It's going to take you to this website here. And the first one, I mean, the 30 week program is $24.99. And why you will get with this this uh, program? Simply, it's it's an amazing, an amazing. I promise you. And the regular price is if you look into General Assembly. So the regular price is 16000 This is what competitors do. They have a 13-week program as well. And uh, so they teach uh, Unix, Relation Database, Data Analyst, uh, Analysts, and Python Machine Learning, Critical Thinking, Data Visualization, and 16,000, take it or leave it, and we're making this affordable for the Ummah, 24.99 with money back guaranteed. If you are not satisfied, you can repeat at no cost, and also we are going to help you with resume preparation, NRV preparation, and job placement guidance. So we have this one, you know, data science Python is 9.99, and uh, big data is 7.99. All the programs is going to start. October the 20th, so please, you know, if you are interested in learning data science, this is just the right time to jump in and learn it. You don't have to learn it through us, to be honest with you, brothers and sisters. There's a lot of ways you can learn data science, but at the bottom, I mean, at the end of the day, I really want you to learn data science. You have to learn data science. It's a mass learning data science because that's a future weapon that you need to add to your, your arsenal. But if you come through us, this is going to be a different story, inshallah. We will help you step by step, regardless of your background, regardless of your age, to excel as data scientists. And that's it for today, inshallah. I'm going to leave the floor for Brother Dawood. Brother Dawood, the floor is yours. Please open it for, for questions and answers. Brother uh, Medwani, uh, you, say, you said it uh, correctly that you know people don't have to take course from your uh, from uh, your training session. They can right. learn it from anywhere. But our main uh, motive here is to kind of you know encourage people to learn data scientists, uh, data science, and be in this field because there is a future, long-term future in, in this uh, field. This is still a, uh, a new field. Like a couple of years back, it started maybe three, four years maximum, I believe. And it's it's moving on and, and it's growing. So I would say it doesn't matter where you learn this course from, uh, where you are learning. You are going for a master, PhD, or you are learning online free courses. Doesn't matter. We want you guys to start thinking about getting into data science and learn about this technology and implement and use this in your life. You know, in, inshallah, it will help you out. Not only just you. You can solve a lot of problems in the society. 
just think from a perspective if you learn data science is not just the problem of the company but you can solve a lot of problem in the society you can see as a create a solution for yourself and pass it on to uh, on to the society so this is not just for yourself but also for the community you can help it out so jazakallah khair and also uh, we alhamdulillah as uh, brother mo madwani promised you know we usually do not entertain business on almpg uh but alhamdulillah we really really as the almpg team believe in what brother mo is offering and his team is offering because there are not a lot of people who offer such a intense course in such a reasonable price not just that he the, the only i think the only organization which is offering you guys a, a money back i'm not here to sell the course but uh, this is like a like not not a reality thing here right nobody does that nobody is going to tell you that you know if you don't like the course we'll give you the money back if you want to repeat the course you can repeat it for free nobody does that so that's why you know we really believe and in fact in the early when he started his business i joined his session and they are intense it is better to take his course than rather than going for a masters degree i would say i mean i have i am doing my third masters degree you know it i think a um, masters degree don't offer that much knowledge or that much uh, they don't kind of you know uh, move you out of your comfort zone than his course and i really like that um that's how it should be the learning should be that you should come out of your comfort zone and you should learn and the way they have designed the course is perfect uh, brother madwani i should say comment that you know mashallah you have really raised the bar high so people can learn and inshallah they can really really think about getting into this career So at the end guys it doesn't matter where you learn from we want you guys to learn it and inshallah uh, use it in your life and alhamdulillah brother mo has been very uh, 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 humble to us and he offered that you know anybody uh, almpg students or almpg members if they want to be uh, take his course they he will offer them 15% discount on any course you guys take so this is the discount code almpg15 put it up if you are uh, if you want you can use this and inshallah he regularly give 10% or uh, discount but any members who are using this almpg code uh, he will give inshallah them uh, almp 15% discount inshallah which is great and uh, the 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 thing you learn from this inshallah maybe you can learn you can teach it to others you know and you can start a career in it so inshallah i think this is end so if anybody wants to take a screenshot of this uh, slide you can do that alpg 15 pretty simple use that when you kind of you know go towards the payment and inshallah he will give you uh, that will get, uh, fetch you 15% discount inshallah that is actually big so jazakallah khair brother mo i know you have uh, you know you know have extended uh, discount and alhamdulillah only for the alpg folks so jazakallah khair and now let's take some questions Uh, I'm going to open the floor for questions. I'm going to unmute you all, and if you guys have questions, let's ask those questions. I am going to put this session into Q and A mode. Ask questions. Uh, brothers, join in the queue who have any questions. Okay, I see brother Asif. Go ahead. Uh, anybody else wants to ask a question? Feel free. Uh, let me take a couple of questions from the chat box, brother Mo. a uh, question as i understand 60 to 70 per part of the data uh, science comprise of data cleaning and getting the right data for modeling how do we learn and master this now brother mo would you want to take that question oh sorry i know i have to unmute you give me one sec okay yeah okay. that's a good question yeah thanks for asking the question brother fasi uh, fasi so about it so uh yes i mean for uh, once before before you apply uh you know before you pre process prepare your data you need to understand your data better so one way to understand the data is you need to visualize it you need to do some histograms bar plot scatter plot line plot etc and so this this history this history this uh, this plotting will definitely give you a clear understanding of how skewed your data is how imbalanced your data is and there are a lot of techniques you can apply in you know, order to fix them so there are techniques you can apply to impute missing values if there is any missing values there are some techniques that you can apply to uh, find duplicate records and to remove them there are some techniques that you can apply you know to deal with outliers so there is no way i can explain this in in, in technical part of view but if you are interested in you know if anyone interested you know in knowing this i will be happy to do one another session online session exp- giving an example 
of how we can deal with you know data quality issues of the data. Right. Jazakallah khair. All right. Let me take some questions from the brothers who have joined on the question line. Uh, so, brother Asif, go ahead. Ask your question. I have unmuted you. You can ask your question. Uh, brother Asif, uh, you have been unmuted. You can ask your question. Okay. I think he dropped off. No, not a problem, brother or sister. I don't know. Your number is 4813. Please ask your question. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay. Please ask your question. Okay. My question is, uh, I'm in the field. I'm not a data scientist, but I'm in mm -hmm. analytics team. And I'm working as a data engineer. And I actually uh, create the table, load the data using the ETL process as using SSIS, using mm -hmm. SQL Server database. And also data quality, that also I, um, I deal with that. But the, my question is, I want to get in uh, data scientist team. Since I'm there already, and, uh, I can say in my team they're part of data scientists, but I want to learn, as, a, the, as, as brother mentioned, the, the tabloid. Python also I know a little bit for visualizing the data. But the, mm -hmm. I cannot attend the class that training brother will have to, as a full time. So do you have any class for weekend, only in the weekend? Okay, sister, yes, I understand your question. Yes, yes, sister, I mean, uh, just let's talk about the schedule. So we meet, we meet three times a, day, a week. We meet every Saturday from 3 p.m. Eastern time to 6 p.m. Eastern time. We meet every Monday and Thursday from 8 p.m. Eastern time to 11 p.m. Eastern time. So, uh, yes, and I'm going to be available 24-7. And also, uh, you know, if you need, if you miss any session, you can access the, the recorded sessions. And if you go through the recorded sessions and you're still not clear about anything because of the accident, because I've been fast or something, then I'm going to be available 24-7 to help you uh, excel. So regardless of the timing, sister, you know, please, you know, I'm, I'm so happy that you are in the field. And that simply tells me you have a solid background to be a data scientist. Yeah, you can still, you know, you need to put effort. You need to sacrifice some time to learn data science. And since you are already in the field, it's going to take you less than three months to be a data scientist, sister. And in the program, what are you going to be learning? You are going to be learning Tableau, Rapid Miner, Big ML, SAS for Enterprise Miner, uh, what's analytics are and Python for data science, plus you'll be learning the five skills that we, we talked about. You'll be learning the five domain we talked about. You'll be, you'll be learning the five life cycle we talked about. So the program is designed to help you excel in data science from entry level to advanced level, plus you'll be working on a project. The project is where you'll be working with three or four students and you will be applying what you learn during the week. So at the end of the game, you should go home with nine, ten projects in your resume. And these nine wow. projects, they, they tackle most common uh, business, business problems, like churning problems, advertisement problems, uh, you know, ABC problems, etc. Fraud detection, you know, anomaly detection. So they, I mean, we designed the to tackle most common business problems. And once you complete any of these projects and participate in other ones, you can tackle any business problems similar across industries. So coming back to your question, yes, we have a flexible time. I can design, I can design, if, if it does not work for you three times a week, you can attend you know, Saturday from 6 p.m., 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And I can design an extra time for you and for everybody in that category to do it just twice a week, Saturday and Sunday. And for the rest of the class, I can do it Saturday, Monday, and Thursday. Okay, inshallah, brother, inshallah. So, reach out, yeah, reach so out to I me. I will send it to you. So, how I will contact you? I already registered. So, how I will contact you, inshallah? Yeah, brother. Uh, his number is on the screen. Uh, yeah. If you want to take a screenshot, go ahead. You can Actually, contact him directly. I logged in with the phone number. So, okay. 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 678 The number again is 678 Two zero nine nine seven eight zero. Okay, hold on, brother. Let me write it down. I'm sorry, You know what? Let let me post uh, put it in the chat box. Are you on the uh, chat box? Uh, 
Actually, I logged in with my cell phone. So okay, no problem, no problem. That's fine, that's fine. Uh, you can write it down, brother Mo. If you can, no, no, uh, you I'm want. I'm in the. Um, uh, I'm in. I'm in uh, can I? Okay, and um, I can write it down, or I can give okay. you my phone phone number, my email address. No, no, also. no, no. That's fine. You know what? Uh, let me uh, let me repeat the number. You just write it down, okay? Okay, go ahead. Please. Okay, it's gonna be six seven eight. Six seven eight. Two zero nine. Two zero nine. Nine seven eight zero. Okay. Nine seven eight zero. And okay. Six seven eight two zero nine nine seven eight zero. And you brother. Yes. Um, uh, uh, brother Mo M O M O Mo Mo Medwani. Okay. So you can reach him out directly. You don't have to reach out to ALMTG, oh, okay. but we can help if you need any help. So okay. Uh, let's okay. take. Uh, I hope we have answered all your questions. So inshallah, yeah, you know. Okay. Uh, see a sister or brother you know it really doesn't matter to us where you get the training from some of the brother are asking you know the training is cheaper outside go ahead take the training yes, but brother, you know can we you, oh, can I please you can I please answer that question yes one brother yes of course there are so many training programs for ten dollars so what yeah. makes what makes you know the program different so number one my program is an equivalent of a master degree it's an interactive you are going to see me live in a camera so we are going to tra tra train you from zero to hero. So in every day, so I'm going to be available 24-7. And you are going to be learning not only part of data science, you are going to be learning the whole package. You'll be learning R, Python, Rapid Miner, Tableau, Search General Prize Miners. You are going to be learning machine learning, deep learning, big data, anything you may think of. Plus, you are going to get the money back. Plus, we are going to help you with the resume preparation, interview preparation, and job placement. And my relationship with you will start when you complete the program because at that point, you are going to need me more. Once you get the first project, inshallah, you're still going to need my assistant. Then I will be behind the scenes supporting you. So that's what makes us different from the $10, you know, $10 uh, project online. Jazakallah khair. Yes. You know, I just want to, you know, bring that up. You know, you have, yes, we have a lot of courses, but see, having a mentor makes a lot of difference. It doesn't matter where you find a mentor. You learn something and you need to have a mentor in the industry, right, who can help you, who can guide you, right? Uh, just getting the training is not sufficient. You need somebody to help you guide when you are in a, on a job. Uh, somebody to kind of lead a way for you. I think if Mo Medwani, uh, Brother Mo can help you out with that, I think this is a good offer. And plus, think about it. If we are here creating a career, right? You are spending whatever money you are spending towards building a career. Come on, we spend uh, thousands of dollars just on food. Every month our grocery bills are at five, six hundred dollars, right? Why not just spend like maybe three, four thousand dollars? I'm I'm just giving you a figure, rough figure on developing a long time career, which will stretch you a six figure salary in future. So just think about it. We are we see for a short term. No, look at the long term goal. Okay, your long term goal. I'm um, I'm also a mentor to a lot of students, so I tell them the same thing. Look at the long term goal. Okay. Don't look at the short term, look at the long term. And also, I think, Brother Moore, just tell me, clarify me this. For students, you also have some finance option, right? Payment option. Yes. Uh, you can help them out, right? So if you, want, if you are a student, you can't pay it uh, upright, inshallah, Brother Moore will help you out with, you know, uh, payment plan. I'm not sure. You have to talk to him. Let's take another question from Brother uh, Arif Or. Uh, please go ahead, Brother Arif. Hmm. I don't know. Sure, I think he dropped off. So let's take one more question from brother, uh, brother or sister. Two nine six five phone number. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think they dropped. Oh, uh, oh, my bad. I just dropped you. Can you rejoin the Q and A session? I just dropped you. Okay. Uh, let's take some questions from the chat box. Okay, uh, oh, oh. Brother Ahmed is asking a question, uh, Brother Mo. Uh, what would be outlook after five years? Uh, so if you are talking about your career after five years, definitely you are going to make it if you have the skills and the, and the, the, the weapon in your hand. 
but for the future, I mean, as I said, data science is, I mean, the data is the oil, and data science is the skill set that you need to use, uh, you know, you need to apply, you know, to, to be able to use the oil. So data science is the future. In ten, five years, six years, seven years from now, if you don't have the skill set, you are out of the market, you are outdated. I'm not trying to scare you, but that's the future brother. And as as brother that would say, I really don't care if you are taking my program. As far as as, as concerned, uh, as a brother and sister, please go ahead, invest in learning data science. Simply, it is the future. If you have time and money, go do a master degree, a PhD degree. If you don't have time and money, uh, go do some online free courses. If you want to take the program from us, definitely we will help you end to end. And inshallah, the money back is guaranteed. It's not a game. But one thing that I want, I want to say about my program, it's not a game. If you are not into it, you know, you are not going to make it. So I'm going to push you so hard to learn because you are my brother and my sister, period. Okay, Jazakallah khair. Uh, okay, five, uh, five years. Brother uh, Ahmed, uh, just to give you a glimpse of five-year industry on uh, data science, it's going to grow. It's going to really grow because I have seen uh, from the last two, three years that data science and a lot of uh, uh, this new AI technologies are growing. Uh, just to give you an example, Brother Mo, the company I work in, I work for a healthcare company right here in Los Angeles. I work as a uh, lead uh, data, uh, I mean, BI guy. So BI and uh, AI, so we used to do BI. BI, business intelligence, is uh, analyzing past data, right, historical data. AI or data science is analyzing future data, predictive data, predicting the future. So we have using, Brother Mo, uh, AI to predict how many flu shots we're going to need next year in our, uh, on, in our hospitals. So that's how we are predicting. So there is a lot of scope. People are utilizing it. So there are a lot of companies who want to see what's going to happen in future, at least predict. So there are a lot of opportunity, Brother Ahmed, just to answer your question. Now, another question is, one of the brother, his Mustaq Ahmed, he also tried to raise a question that what is the difference between data scientists and business analysts? Pretty simple, brother. Business analyst role and job, he is a liaison. He is a bridge between technical team and management team. That's it. He is just going to get the requirement and pass it on to the technical team, whereas data scientist does a lot more. They do investigation. They get the requirement from the manager or the business user. They get the requirement and they start from scratch. They have to do it. They have to get the data. They have to clean the data. They have to do everything from the uh, scratch and get some value out of the uh, answer for that question. That is simple between a simple difference between data scientists and business analysts. I think business analyst job, uh, data scientists, scientists also fulfill business analyst job, but not on a large level, but on a smaller level. I think the data scientists can uh, also play a small role of business analyst. So I, I hope I answered your question. Brother Asif, can you please talk about, okay, hold on. Can you please talk about, hold on. Uh, please, <laughs> people are typing in questions. The questions are going up. Assalam, oh, hold on. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, uh, brother Akhtar. Okay, uh, so can you can one pursue this part time until the skills are developed enough to find uh, employment in this field? Of course, yes. Why not? If, see, uh, uh, I am working a full time job. If I want to learn a new technology, I can learn over the weekend. Uh, work at least four or five hours a week and do it. Maybe and start looking for a job after two months, after three months. Yes, you can, of course, do it on the part-time. You don't have to be a full-time. And plus, his course is not a full-time course like a, uh undergrad course. It's a part-time course he's offering on weekends, on evenings, on weekdays. So you can please uh, contact him and get more details on that and schedule a session which suits your need, okay? And Brother Asif, I already asked. Brother Mushtaq, I already answered your question. As I understand, 62, okay, we already took that. Brother Mir, how data science and machine learning will be or is internal part of, part for testing domain in terms of automation? Can you please, uh, can you explain a bit? Brother Mo, did you got that question? I'm not sure if I got it, but I will explain it. Let, you know, let me paste that in the chat box fresh, okay? So you will see that, okay? Okay, how, how data science machine learning would be an integrated part of this in domain in terms of automation? Can you explain that a bit? Okay, brother, so uh, this, you know, uh, 
as I said, you know, everything will be automated shortly, I mean, sooner or later. So automation comes after testing, after validation. So data science, there are so many ways you can fix a problem. You can fix a problem using statistical analysis. You can fix a problem using, and the most common one is using data science and machine learning. So machine learning simply, it applies what we learn from the past history into, into the future, you know, predicting and seeing, and that model can be automated. So I'll give you an example with, 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 uh, with uh, the calls, 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 which is a grocery, I mean, which is a retail store. You know, they, they provide you with 25% at front if you are the first client and the first time purchasing from them if you want to use their credit card. So there is an automated process in the application using machine learning, maybe decision tree or uh, whatever model they use. So simply you ask, you answer three questions and you submit, you submit and the model will take it, analyze it and within less than a minute you get approval or denial. So that's automation. Automation is simply applying, taking the models, putting them alive and let them do the job for us. And with automation, there are so many jobs that can be lost. And at the same time, there are so many jobs that will be created. So, and as I said, this is just the right time to learn that. I hope you answered your question, brother. Yes, JazakAllah khair. Uh, I think we are, alhamdulillah, we are uh, done with the questions. Uh, what if, we, if you are coming from a non-IT or CS background, CS is computer science, right? Uh, okay, okay. And uh, would I still be able to grasp and equip uh, myself with all the training, uh, yes, brother yes. Ahmed? To uh, yeah, uh, yes, let yes. me answer that. I'll try that question, uh, question because I get this a lot of time, brother Mo. Uh, people ask uh, generally in IT. Not, I'm not just like talking about data science, but generally in IT, I have seen a lot of brothers coming from different fields. Some brothers were in business, they jumped into IT. Some brothers were in, uh, uh, you know, uh, engineering field, they jumped into IT. So, Brother Ahmed, it doesn't matter which field you are in and which field you want to get in. If you are ready to learn, if you are ready, ready to get out of your comfort zone, you can learn things. What you just need to do is you just have to kind of, you know, put some effort, some time to learn and practice it. Practice is going to make you perfect. Now, another question is going to come from your end is that what? I go for a job, but I don't have experience, right? That should be the second question in your mind. I'll give you an answer for that. For that, if you join Brother Mohamed, one is, uh, right, of uh, course, you'll get 10 projects. You can put those as your experience, project experience on your resume or do any project online, right? And learn the technology, do product for yourself, and inshallah, you will get uh, some experience and you can put that on your uh, resume, okay? And uh, uh, that's it, I would say, Brother Mo, you want to add something to that? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. As I said, you know, uh, in our, the, the first slide in my presentation, you know, addressed the question, and the brothers, they called me, they complained about the age, they complained about the background. Just let, let me make it clear. You will learn any technology if you have three qualities, commitment, dedication, and patience. That's it. If you have, this is my prerequisites for my program. I don't care about your your background. And the the the, the program is designed for someone who, cl who knows close to nothing in data science and their, their analytics. Yes, I know some students that they will join the program. They already know R and Python, but I will create everybody from zero level to the advanced level. And if you under don't understand anything throughout the program, you can always use me. You know, use the time, and inshallah, I'm available to do one-to-one -one session to explain, to go over any doubt you might have, clear out, answer your question, and clear out your doubt. Okay. JazakAllah khair. Uh, I think we are done with the questions. Uh, I'm going to take one last question, brother, from brother Shamil Hussain. Uh, I'm currently taking data analyst course. Uh, what course is better for the next, data science or machine learning or both? Well, it depends on you, brother Shamil, uh, what you want to learn, where you want to end up at. If you want to go into machine learning or if you want data science, I think machine learning is a part of data science. Right. So your question itself is your answer. So data science is not different. Machine learning is not different. Data science is a vast pro uh, uh, word or term, and machine learning is a part of that, right? 
So right. data science uh, gets everything into it, machine learning, deep learning, or whatever learning it is. So inshallah, with this note, inshallah, we will try to, I will try to, you know, end up the session. Jazakallah khair, everybody, for okay. joining in. I know, see, uh, I want to, now at the end, I want to thank Brother Mo for what he is doing. I'm going to tell you guys simple thing, you know, we just, we are here just to motivate you guys, just to give you a glimpse of how the industry looks and how you can end up in the industry. There are a lot of jobs outside. You guys just need to work hard and inshallah you will get what you're looking for. It doesn't matter which field you are into, which, what experience level you are on, and if you are a fresh, it doesn't matter. Efforts, commitment, make success. Okay? Put some effort, put some hard work, and put some commitment, inshallah, you will see the results. And I'll tell you what, uh, Brother Mo, let me share this with you. When I was out of job, I was out of job uh, for like almost 10 months. In 10 months, I learned more than five technologies in IT. I am, I am swearing by Allah, if you spend one month, you can master any IT technology. One month is enough to master any IT technology if you spend day in and day out. Believe me, just forget about everything. Just spend one month and on any technology. It doesn't matter, data science, Python, R, you name a technology, man. Just spend one month, you will master that technology. Just practice, practice, practice. I learned five, five plus technologies when I was out of job. I didn't took any training. I learned it by myself. So that's what I will tell you guys. So if you have a mentor, it is easier. But if you don't want a mentor, you can't spend money, learn it by yourself. You know, inshallah, improve your conditions. Don't complain that, you know, we are not getting job offer. We are not getting a job. Don't stop complaining. Uh, believe in Allah and put some efforts and inshallah he will give you the result okay inshallah. just work hard and if you guys need any help any you know, kind of uh, career guidance reach out to me reach out to brother Mohamed Wani my email is pretty simple right daud at almpg.com okay I'm gonna just put that in the chat box I might not you know one brother you know reached out to me now that you know he emailed me i didn't respond to him but i think i lost his email i get a lot of emails from brothers and sisters they emailed me tried asking for help so if i missed your email sorry about that but definitely i will reach out to you guys so inshallah don't worry about it so i'll try you can email me or any of the almpg team or at moderators uh, at almpg.com okay uh, you can reach out for any questions, inshallah. We are here as, a, as senior brothers who wants to help you guys out, okay? We will connect you with the right resource, right people who can help you out. We are not here to make money. We are not here to kind of advertise ourselves. We are here for the community we have been doing since 2014. It really doesn't matter to us. We want you guys to succeed. Where you get the help or how you get the help from our platform or wherever you want to go. It's just that we want to help you guys, okay? We want you guys to be successful and pass it on. It's a sharing. The moment you start sharing with others, inshallah, Allah will put more barakah into your work. I have seen in my life. Wallahi, my jobs become so easy when I help people out. Brother Mo, I think you have uh, noticed this in your life. That's true. Yeah. I don't know, but I have, Wallahi, I have seen the, uh, miracles in my life that I help somebody out and Allah make my job so easy that I can't tell you. I don't know how come it happens. So this is this is this is how it is. It should be, you know. Help people out. If you learn, if you are you have the money, you are learning this course. Pass on the information to others. It take you start a course. You teach somebody else for free. You know you can do that. You know, that was one more thing I would love to mention. If you brothers and sisters, if you want to learn data science and you cannot afford it, you are you are moneyless to the point. Wallahi, I will train you for Sabilillah. I will train you for free. So, Inshallah. just show me that you are in a need, means you don't have, you are broken to death. I will train you for Sabilillah. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair, Brother Mo. That takes a lot to tell that. I know you have done the free session for the first batch and paid all the money to a masjid. I still remember that. So, Jazakallah khair. So, you know, I, I request all of you, brothers and sisters, Achieve what you want. You just need to work hard. Believe in Allah. And remember the words from the Quran which say, where it say, Allah says, Allah will not change condition of the people unless and until they change what is within themselves. 
So you guys have to first start changing yourself, become a better person, become a person who wants to achieve things and give back to the community. And Allah will make uh, change your affairs. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I always tell my brothers and sisters, they will just lose hope. I'm looking for a job from five months. I'm looking for a job from six months, seven months, ten months. It doesn't matter. I'll tell you, you will learn more when you are out of job when you are on a job. You will be more closer to Allah when you are out of job when you are on a job. So subhanallah, this is a great opportunity to ponder and think about and to learn new things. So take this as a positive way, one or the other way, inshallah, you will, oh, one or the other way and day, you will find a job. Don't worry, job is just a beginning, job is not your life. Job is just a part of your big life. Life is big, it's huge. Job is just a part to survive, okay? So don't worry about it. Brother, uh, ask where is Big Bang located? It's online. Big Bang happened in the universe, but Big Bang Data Science is located in Atlanta. So Brother Mo is located there. So just on a, just I want to share that on a lighter note. So just believe in this in yourself. And also, just to give you a guys good uh, one other help, you know, there is this uh, 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 webinar I conducted uh, uh, a week back. Uh, this webinar was for a job search and resume workshop. You guys need to watch this. If you are in market, you don't know how to start, where to start, this is a good uh, uh, session. So go ahead and uh, attend this session. I mean, uh, this is online available, right? So here I'll send you the link on the chat box. If you are, uh, if you want to know how to create a good resume, how to search for a job, here is the link. Let me just share that. Brother Mo, I don't know if you have attended this, but this was a very successful session. So this is fantastic, actually. So this was a very good session. I am just putting it in the chat box. If you want to pass it on to your students, Brother Mo, you can do so. We covered everything, how to create a LinkedIn profile, how to create a eye-catching resume, cover letter, how to search for a job, how to uh, uh, in, uh, crack an interview. So just watch this video, inshallah, uh, session. You will you will get a lot more from it. So Jazakallah khair, brother. Uh, with this note, uh, this was your brother Dawood Ahmed with brother Mohamed Wani and whole ALMPG team, brother Abdul Wahab and brother Riyaz and brother Ilyas, if he's here. I want to say uh, Jazakum Allah khair for joining in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Wal-Asr inna al-insana lafi khusf illa al-lazina aman wa amila salihati wa tawasaw bil-haqqi wa tawasaw bil-sabr Jazakum Allah khair Until the next session This is your brother Dawood Ahmed Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Take care guys